You know that charting is important when you want to fall pregnant faster because it helps you to see each month when you're about to be fertile and not waste a fertile window. But did you also know that your charts give you clues as to what fertility hurdles you might be dealing with and that those are compromising your fertility? Let's have a look. Hello lovely, welcome to my channel. My name is Inga Fleur and I'm a fertility homeopath and I help couples worldwide to fall pregnant naturally through the videos on this channel and my DIY and live programs. And I just had a quick look on my channel to see how many videos I've got so far. Turns out this is my 200th video. What? And welcome to my new office. Can you see that the environment is a little bit different? Same books, <laughs> same cupboard, but definitely a different room. If you want to keep up with more of my personal stuff, uh, then you're very welcome to join me on Instagram. On Instagram, I will post more frequently. I will have a bit shorter content, a little tidbits, so to speak, and uh, share a little bit behind the scenes as well. In this video, I want to talk with you a little bit about the clues in your charts, because as I said in the introduction, your charts don't just help you to find when you're fertile every month so that you don't miss out on your fertile window and waste an entire cycle. Your charts also give you clues as to what fertility hurdles you might be dealing with that are compromising your fertility. This is, I think, one of the first things that I started with years and years and years ago, I started with chart interpretation reviews. There was this option for women to send in their charts and then I would tell them, oh, you're dealing with estrogen dominance or you're uh, dealing with maybe hypothyroidism or it seems like there's inflammation in your body. And this was super popular and I loved it. I really enjoyed it, but I, there aren't enough hours in the day for me to, to do that. So what I then did is I developed a course in which you can learn to interpret your charts. But what I'm going to be doing now, which I think is the best of both worlds, I'm going to be running a live program that is called the clues in your charts. And we're going to look at your charts together. What I see a lot with patients that I'm seeing is that either they have a whole collection of charts and they say, well, I've been charting for several years and I am pretty confident about when I am fertile in my cycle, but other than that, I don't really know what my charts are saying. Or that ladies come to me and say, I know you say I should be charting, but I really don't understand what my charts are saying. So I kind of gave up. I just go by my ovulation test, my cervical mucus, whether I think I'm about to be fertile in a cycle. And that's fine, but actually it's not because you're missing out on super valuable information. And this is what I started off with years ago. I was able to discover loads and loads of patterns. Some of the patterns I learned from other people, some of the patterns I discovered myself by seeing tons and tons of people with certain patterns in their charts, then with certain symptoms, then I would treat that with them, and then their chart patterns would change to normal or ideal. So in this video, I want to tell you which clues you can see in your chart. The very first one that I want to talk to you about is progesterone and estrogen levels. It is pretty common online to talk about progesterone deficiency, but it's always considered to be that you are not producing enough progesterone and that, that this could be preventing you from falling pregnant, that it could cause you to have miscarriages. But then the answer to that is almost always, oh, I must be taking extra progesterone. But that is not what it is about. There may be cases where this is relevant, but I almost never suggest it to my patients because low progesterone is always in relation to estrogen. Estrogen and progesterone work together. Estrogen is more dominant in the first half of your cycle before ovulation and progesterone is dominant in the second half of your cycle. And the more estrogen you have in your body, the more progesterone you need to balance it out. If you have too much estrogen in your body in relation to progesterone, what happens is that the second part of your cycle can become too short for implantation to happen. It needs a little bit of time for the egg to travel down and the, the embryo to then implant. And if that period is too short, you will start your period without the embryo having implanted. Now, a very typical sign of low progesterone can be spotting before your period, but also short cycles. 
The thing is, short cycles can also be a sign of estrogen dominance because if you have very high levels of estrogen, you may be ovulating earlier. So if there is a short cycle going on for you or you have spotting, you can't say, oh, it must be a progesterone deficiency and I will just supplement with that and that will solve it. There are loads of reasons for low progesterone and you can actually see that in your charts as well. One of them is estrogen dominance. But if you have low progesterone, you can also become estrogen dominant. <laughs> so you see these two really go hand in hand and you can't just isolate them from one another. So this is the first clue that you can see your charts, progesterone deficiency, estrogen dominance, and whether it's one of the two or it's both. Then you can also, if you can spot if estrogen and progesterone are off, then you can also see if you are hitting menopause or you're nearing menopause or you have low overall hormones, which could be an indication of premature ovarian failure, for example. And sometimes what I see is that women see progesterone and estrogen issues and they assume that it is a menopause thing when that is not the case at all. But you can see from your charts when you are nearing menopause and you're kind of running out of time. It doesn't mean you can't fall pregnant anymore. It just means time is running out a little bit, that you want to hit the accelerator when it comes to treatment and support on lengthening your fertile years and improving their quality so that you can still fall pregnant within that time that you are still going to be fertile. Now here's where it gets interesting in my opinion. If you are seeing signs of low progesterone, then it's important to see in your chart if there are also issues with adrenal stress or adrenal fatigue. Because if you struggle with adrenal stress, your body will produce stress hormones at the expense of progesterone. So you may think, oh, I have a progesterone issue and it must be because of estrogen dominance may not be the case. Or you think, oh, I need to supplement with progesterone. I already said to you, that may not be the case. It's not the case for most women. It could actually be a result of adrenal stress. So if you are spotting adrenal stress in your charts and progesterone deficiency, then you know you need to be working on adrenal health in the very first place. And one of those things could be giving up on your caffeine. And if there is adrenal stress in your chart, what you also can spot is if your thyroid is suffering from that already. If you are experiencing long-term adrenal stress, it can go into adrenal fatigue and eventually your thyroid will hit the brakes. Your thyroid is responsible for the metabolism in your body. So if you are stressed out for a longer period of time, your body is very clever and hits the brakes with your thyroid. It slows down its function because as a result, you will become colder, a bit tired, or a lot tired. You're going to hold on to weight because your metabolism drops. And the idea is that you then pick up on that and think, hey, I guess I need to rest a little bit more. Unfortunately, we don't do that most of the time. Either we don't spot it or you think, oh, I'm gaining weight, so I need to exercise more, I need to eat less but that is actually going to make the situation worse because what your body needs is nourishment and care and rest. Or maybe you will get prescribed thyroid medication and while there's a time and place for thyroid medication, that won't help either in a situation like this where the thyroid is slowing down because of adrenal stress that came before it. Because then you will be taking the thyroid medication, you will feel better and you will just keep on going not solving the underlying issue of your thyroid function being sluggish. If you are seeing symptoms of thyroid problems in your charts, then this is a good time to go to your doctor and ask for blood work to confirm it, for example. But it's also interesting to see that thyroid issues can go hand in hand with estrogen dominance. So if you're seeing estrogen dominance in your chart, you wanna know, did thyroid issues come before that? Are there thyroid issues going hand in hand with it? You see how you can use your charts in this way to figure out what is going on with me. And it is your charts that give you the clues and then you cross check it with the symptoms that you have. Another super interesting thing that you can see from your charts is if you're dealing with chronic inflammation. And chronic inflammation is an issue for your fertility because it may be that your body is in such an inflammatory state that it cannot hold on to a pregnancy, so it will reject an embryo because it just feels like this body is already struggling so much, I can't have a pregnancy on top of it. And that ongoing inflammation can be because of 
circumstances maybe you're very allergic to a certain type of thing and it's always in your environment so you're going to be in that inflammatory state it could be due to heavy metal toxicity which i am seeing with most of my patients in one way or another to be honest having heavy metal toxicity in your body is like an irritant so your body is constantly trying to fight it like with uh like with a virus or a bacteria but because the metals don't leave the body the state of inflammation is ongoing and it can be so low grade that you're functioning but actually in your charts you can see hey there's inflammation going on Another reason for ongoing inflammation can be low nutrients. I talk a lot about omega fatty acids. I do that on prep for baby as well, because if you're low in that or in vitamin D or in some of the other things that are anti-inflammatory, then your body is going to naturally be or have a default that is inflammatory. And you can see it in your, that's right, your chart. An interesting connection with the thyroid symptoms and with the inflammation is that you can also spot signs of PCOS. So you may not have the classic symptoms of PCOS that have already taken you to a doctor to confirm it with tests or with scans, but you can see in your chart that you're having PCOS signs and symptoms. PCOS is often induced by a use of birth control is my experience. I've got a video on that on my channel. So if you're interested, I would highly recommend that you check that out. The birth control detox is also part of prep for baby because again, like the heavy metal toxicity, it is so prevalent and uh, removing that imprint of the birth control use, whether it was short term, whether it was just once a morning after pill or it was years and years and years, it makes a huge difference for hormone balance for women and for uh, their charts. Often if you're seeing PCOS signs and symptoms, you will also see signs of inflammation, but it can also be possible that you're seeing thyroid issues or adrenal stress. And again, adrenal stress and inflammation, you can often see in the same chart as well because inflammation is stress to the body. Now we talked about hypothyroidism that you can see that from your charts, which is an underfunctioning of your thyroid, but you can of course also see hyper thyroidism. This is less common in my experience. Most women um, that have thyroid issues in my clinic will have underfunctioning, but hyperthyroidism is another sign that you can see in your charts and it can actually be mistaken for inflammation and it can also be mistaken for early menopause symptoms. So definitely relevant to know what you're doing when you're interpreting your charts and your patterns and to know what to do next. If you're seeing signs and symptoms in your charts of a certain hormone imbalance or inflammation, then you're going to wanna know, what do I do next to confirm that is going on? And more importantly, what am I going to do next to address it? You can sometimes just skip the, the diagnosing part. Seeing it in your chart and knowing certain symptoms are going on for you can be enough for you to decide, okay, I need to go this direction. But it's such a waste of time for you to think, oh, I should maybe just supplement with progesterone when really you're dealing with hypothyroidism symptoms or that you're addressing thyroid symptoms with medication or something else when the reason for your hypothyroidism is ongoing inflammation that is causing you adrenal stress and then it's going into hypothyroidism. What I haven't mentioned yet, but is important to mention separately is more of a symptom, I guess, than it is an underlying issue, and that is lack of ovulation. If you are having regular cycles, you may think that you're ovulating and you're able to fall pregnant, but you can see from your charts when you have anovulatory cycles, that is when you're not ovulating. And that could be a result of early menopause, of low hormones, it could be a sign of PCOS, it could be a hypothyroidism issue. But again, if you're not ovulating, first of all, you're going to wanna to know because you need to address that as soon as possible. No point trying if you're not even ovulating. And secondly, you're going to wanna to see from your charts, what direction do I need to start looking into to know why I am not ovulating? And then start addressing that so that you can start ovulating again. In my experience, the quickest fix for hormone imbalance is detoxing birth control. So if you wanna check out that video, go and have a look how birth control affects your hormone balance and your fertility, short term, long term, and whether you've taken it just a day or for years and years. Go and check it out.